Okay, it's uh, 10 o'clock and I'm online now and Remy just came online. Okay, I'm about to mute myself. What's that? I'm about to mute myself because you won't be able to hear yourself talking. Are, are you going to sit here and watch this whole thing or are you working? I'm sitting here and listening. I just got out of my other class. Okay, so you don't work during this time. I do. I'm in the bathroom because I had to get into the Zoom call. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. No, no problem. We're just going to uh, go over what's in Canvas right now and, 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 and some of the things we need to do and tidy up. And I have posted the, the same four videos that we looked at last semester. Yep. And I, I, I need you to just watch them between now and Friday and review your notes. And I know you had some pretty good notes. Okay? Okay. All right. Tara, are you there? Yes, sir. All right. So um, I'm going to uh, share my screen and I'm going to go to uh, Canvas. Uh, let's see. All right. So do you see Canvas up there? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so this is the home page right here. The home page consists of some information that you might need to know, a direct link to Canvas rather than going through Valley, although it, it does go through Valley, but you don't have to go to, to it. You can just click right there. Um, it also contains what is a supposedly weekly syllabus, all right? Mm -hmm. um, and this this is dynamic down here. Schedule may be adjusted. That's what the star is right up here. So, um, that's that. Uh, announcements. You already know that one. Let me ask you this, Dar. Did you did you get a did you get an announcement, uh, an email or a text message this morning about uh, this meeting? No, sir. Okay. I, I put it in there and I didn't get one either. So I'm going to probably have to go back to it. But anyways, um, here it is. And then there's the syllabus. I need, I need both of you to download the syllabus. Uh, by the way, uh, Bremi is muted. She's working. She's just paying attention. And I'm recording this and I'll be posting it so you can come back and look at it. But Bremi has elected to take um, all of her classes online from Chicago. All right, so so here's the syllabus. You can uh, you you could just click here and view it, or you could uh, or excuse me, click here and download it, and, or click here and preview it. And then also, I put in here the Zoom meeting. This is our regular meeting. If it changes, I'll let you know. But it's a reoccurring. It's Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 10 a.m. At least at the moment. All right. So, so if, if, if you don't know what, what the Zoom is, you just go to where the syllabus page is. Okay, then I have modules here. And uh, I've only put up one module and it's the same module that we had last semester. So between now and Friday, I need you to watch these four videos, look over your notes and kind of just review it. And then we're going to go back to equalization. Um, okay. So, have, having said that, there is a, um, I actually put a PDF in here, and it's right here of a book, but I'm thinking you don't really want to get that one. Hang on a second.
so listed in the syllabus. It's uh, can you see that? Yeah. Yeah, but anyways, it's called the art of mixing. This link right here, uh, you'd have to copy and paste it, but it um, it goes to my SharePoint through MVSU, which is like OneDrive, it's called, and it's a and it's a PDF of of the first um, edition of the of the book, and it's an all black and white. But I thought that would be okay, but then I realized that it doesn't have this first section here. And this first section is mostly what we're gonna talk about. Um, so I'll, I'll just probably take pictures of it and uh, give you a PDF. So do you have, do you have the ability to print, print things, Dar Dara? Um, not at the moment. I gotta go get some more ink, but I can get some. I don't know how soon, but I can get some. We don't need to print these. I wouldn't want you to print these and suck up all your your, uh, your stuff. But occasionally, I might want you to print something, and I'll make sure it's in black and white so it doesn't suck up all your color and it doesn't have a lot of pictures. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I, I use a laser printer. You can buy laser printers for relatively cheap, then, then, then you have to replace the cartridge. And it's only black and white. But the cartridge goes on forever and ever and ever. Uh, by the time by the time you buy a few uh, a bunch of those ink jets, you paid three times as much for ink as you would with just a black and white cartridge. But if you need color, that's fine. So now, what we really need to talk about is what we need to uh, work on this class. Um, this class is a mixing class. Unfortunately. Now we're not at school. Bremi's not at school at all. I had a conversation with her last night uh, about what about this. But Dara, you have a computer, right? Uh, yes, sir. It's it's getting fixed, but I have one. Okay. I think we we had this conversation a couple weeks ago. Um, so so the the best option that we have really to do this is to. Um, use a program called Pro Tools Free. Pro Tools Free. So if I look up Pro Tools Free, do you see a new screen on here? My, my search or, or no? Uh-uh. All right, I'm going to switch by share screen. All right, so now you should see this right here. Um, so Pro Tools Free is, is a free version of Pro Tools. Uh, goes on forever. Um, One of the reasons why they want you to to use their uh, Pro Tools free is because then you get used to Pro Tools, and then when you need to upgrade, you're buying Pro Tools. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Okay, so it's a limited version of Pro Tools. You can only do about 16 tracks, uh, but you have to do it all online. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So. I would investigate that that program because that that will make life easier if we're all on the same program. Um, the program that you're using is 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 a is a great program. Uh, uh, Audacity, but it isn't really for mixing. You know, it, it, it's pretty good. You can make some tracks, but your your problem is is when you bounce them down. You don't have something at the beginning of that track. Yes, sir. Of everything to the beginning, so it was kind of strange, and I, and there, there's and I spent a long time investigating it last semester, and the only workaround is to do a little 
So, the problem with Pro Tools is, let's see, uh, you do see this program, this, this new screen rolling on? Yes, sir. So, get Pro Tools free uh, first, or it's actually not Pro Tools free, it's called Pro Tools first, it looks like, I'm sorry. You get 23 plugins, so you get some plugins. All right, you're gonna get the the classic, uh, you know, plugins that that we're using, which are which are the basic ones, um, which is you know like you're gonna get one or two EQs, you're gonna get uh, one or two compressors, things like that, which is all the things we need, you know, a reverb or two, a chorus or two. But you're, we're going to get some plugins that we can use. And then what's going to happen is uh, we're going to get to a point in a, in, a, in, a, in a couple of weeks that we're going to start a mix. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and there's a, there's a place that has just a ton of, of pieces of music that people want mixed and it's free, but you're going to have to download that and then probably and you're gonna to have to download it and then, and because I don't have Pro Tools free, I don't know exactly how it works. And then you're gonna to have to, you know, set up a Pro Tools file and uh, put the tracks into it. And at that point in time, they'll probably upload the tracks. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. It will be time consuming okay, to do that. Yeah. You're going to need a decent internet connection. Do you have a decent internet connection? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Because that's all I have is a decent one because I live in Greenwood. Mm -hmm. Greenwood, my internet drops off all the time. This is my most stable computer. Well, occasionally what happens, it'll stop and we'll have to start the meeting all over. So, so be aware of okay, that. That just happens. The internet decides to stop in Greenwood. So I talked to my neighbor, same thing. Talked to the choir director who lives, you know, five, six blocks away. He has the same problems too. So everybody I know has these problems in Greenwood, although we pay a gosh awful amount of money for it. <laughs> Probably more than uh, in a big city, there's competition, but there's no competition here. So that's the situation. So one of the things that's somewhat important is how much RAM you have. Now, I don't know if your RAM is replaceable because uh, I'm not sure about your computer, but you, uh, and if it's an old computer, you probably need to max it out. But they say you should have eight, eight gigs of RAM. Okay. They, and, Presently, they're talking about 16 gigs of RAM for the latest versions. Also, but you can see how, how it worked with four gigs, four gigs, whatever. But if you only have one gig of RAM, you're probably not going to be able to run Pro Tools. So then we have to look at some other options, and those other options, you're at least going to have to buy something. Do you understand what I'm saying? I can't, I can barely hear you. Oh, I didn't know that. Can you hear me better? Yes, sir. A lot better or just sort of better? I can hear you a lot better right now. Okay. If that ever happens again, tell me. Because so I'll tell you what the deal is. I have a, a mixer here that is attached to my computer, and I can use it in the interface also. And um, which I'm doing right now. Um, but it's a digital mixer, and what happens with digital mixers often is when you turn them back on, 
uh, your levels are set to something, but you really got to turn the level down and then back up. Okay. Yes, sir. So if we're having any problem with 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 my volume, please let me know right away. Yes, sir. Okay, so I'm back to this. So if if your computer isn't functioning with Pro Tools first, uh, then we can look at some other programs. However, you're going to have to pay some money for those programs. And I'm not sure if they're going to work. You have a Windows machine, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So best thing to do is when you get it home is to go and get Pro Tools first and see if it's going to function. All right. Now, the next thing you're going to need is a pair of headphones. Not, not, not a, a cheap one, but, but something probably about you know those headphones in our at, at school mm -hmm. probably about 50 or 60 dollars now they used to be a lot more and there's a particular one that's a little bit different than that but it's still a closed back one that's about 50 dollars and it folds up that you can probably get and um, Let me, let me find what it is. It means I got to go to my email. You're not looking at my email now, are you? Uh, uh I'm sorry, I'm, 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 I'm not saying anything, but I'm actually looking up a pair of headphones. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reshare my uh, a screen, a different screen here. Um, all right, so do you see uh, something that says AKG K175? Uh-huh. Verify that, um, that record. Here we go. 
Uh, yeah, K175. All right. So you can get a pair of these for about $50. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. Call them up. You can probably buy them in several places. All right. But uh, Jim Swain at Sweetwater, which is where that where I'm looking at, he recommended this pair when I had a discussion with him about a, a, a month ago. And, um, you can really buy them anywhere, but they're, they should be around fifty dollars. Okay, they're close. Back. They're gonna they're gonna fold up in some way. It doesn't really look like they do. Close back foldable earphones. Oh, and and I'm gonna be honest with you. I wouldn't put these through the paces and run them all over the place. I would just leave them at home. And and the reason is uh, these things right here. You see what I'm circling? Oh. You see that? Mm -hmm. Those things on the headphones that you're using, they started falling out. And the headphones that you're presently using, we only bought last fall. And so they, they after, uh, Got it when we got them just at the end of the semester, so we started to use them in the spring. And after a few uses, one of them actually wasn't working right anymore. So just be careful with them. But you're going to need a decent pair of headphones. You can't use a pair of headphones like um, uh, whatever Beats headphones. Beats headphones, and I think we had this discussion before, but. Uh, they they tend to boost the bass, so you don't really know what you're really listening to. So when we're doing mixing, we want something that's pretty flat. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Right. So, do you have any questions at this point? No, sir. All right. So, I'm just curious. Do you remember anything about an equalizer? Uh, not really. Um, how about do you remember um let's say um two different ways we can uh put effects on tracks uh maybe that's not the right uh way to say it uh, yeah okay it, the two different ways of routing is, is what what we were taught we were saying there's two different ways you remember what those two different ways are um not i really don't all right what was it got a piece of paper i got my notes hold on i gotta pull them up on my phone ah you got your notes mm-hmm cool I'm going to get rid of this screen and I'm going to uh, stop that there. Um, okay. All right. So, so when I say routing, you know, if you want to put an equalizer into your signal, there's two different ways to do it. Do you know what the two different ways are? No, sir. One is to insert it directly into the track. Uh, let me... I'm going to share something with you again here.
I'm sharing this window right now. I mean, uh, actually. Yeah, that's pretty wonderful. So are you seeing the mixing board? Yes, sir. Do you see do you see the edit window now or no? Uh uh. I see the um the board. Or that that's fine. All right. So if I wanted to, to put something in a track, I could insert it and I could have put it directly into the track. All right. So uh -huh. insert a key, key, key. Insert the seven band EQ. It's all cool. All right. And it goes directly in the track and it affects the track. All right. Uh -huh. So that's, that's one type of routing. It's called insert routing. Okay. Now, there's, a, there's another way you can do it. And this is the way Jimmy favors to do things um, for, for a number of different reasons. Um, you can, instead of sending your output to the, the main output, you can send it somewhere else. And it's called, and that's called send routing. Okay. And, uh, I, I'm, I'm sure I don't have anything over here, but, uh, But instead of sending it to, in my case, it's this, I could send it to an, another, another place. Do you understand? Because this is the input and this is the, out, uh, and this is in and this is out. All right. So if you're recording something, that's what's coming in. But in our case, if we're not recording, since we're not recording anything, this is, it out and in my case it's going to out one and two but i could send it somewhere else do you understand what i'm saying yes sir so i'm sending the signal somewhere else this is what our book actually says this type differs from insert instead of inserting a, a signal changing device directly into the signal path like we did right here okay we're going to send it somewhere else. Really, sending it to a, an effects aux, aux track. So I could do something like, um, uh, let me select this track right here. It's out of the way. Uh, um, where did I put that in? All right, and then I'm going to add a track, okay? Command Shift N, remember that? Mm-hmm. All right, and uh, I'm just going to add a track, but it's going to be an aux track, all right? Mm-hmm. And I'm going to the aux track. And here, here's, here's my aux track right here. It, it went over here. Um, right next to it see it right here all right so it, instead of instead of uh, sending it to your output I, I might want to send it to an aux track you understand what I'm saying yes sir and this isn't actually set up perfectly right now but I would send it to this track right here which is my aux track and instead of having my equalizer here I would have it here uh, the input channels does not match. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, all right. So what 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 I did here is I had a stereo track here and I put in a mono aux track, so it didn't work. But really, you would want to use that as let's say you were applying EQ or some effect to a number of different instruments. Instead of putting that insert in each one of them, you could send them all to the aux channel. Do you understand what I mean by that? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, that's one way, one of the reasons, but Jimmy likes to do, 
Uh, and what I've learned from Jimmy, because it's not something I, I had done until I met Jimmy doing this. Uh, he likes to set up an aux track whenever he, he puts something in. And then what he does is he mixes the two of them together. He has the straight signal and the reverb signal or, or the EQ signal. Do you, do, you, do you know what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. So it probably doesn't work real good for EQ, but it works much better for reverb or other things like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, there are two types of routing, insert routing and send routing, all right? So then we have, you know, FX processors, and there's a, a number of different, we're, we're going to run out of time in a little bit here, possibly. Uh, they have been letting me go, continue on, but I think at some point they're going to they're gonna cut us off. And that'll be about nine minutes. So just so to be aware of that. Okay. Uh, so, so effects processing and effects processing is, is like anything, anytime you put something on it, like a chorus, a reverb, EQ, you're, you're affecting the signal. So you have the signal and then you, you, you do something different with it. So as an example, we talked about filters, right? Last semester, we talked about filters a lot. Yeah, we did. Oh, can you name can you, um, uh, uh, two types of filters? Mm. Mm. You see this equalizer here? Uh huh. You see the equalizer up on the board here? Mm hmm. Okay. Um, it, it, it's on top of the mix, right? Mm hmm. All right. So here are the two types of them. Do you see these two right here? Mm hmm. You know what they're called? Is that EQ? Is it low pass and high pass filters? Um, well, that's a type of a filter, and that's a type of this type of filter right here. I'm I'm actually just looking for the general what, what this is called. If I do that, what is that? What is what is this? It starts with an S. Does anyone remember? Yes, no, maybe. I, I don't remember. I don't and, 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 and one is a high pass and a, and a low pass, depending on where you got it. All right, but it's called a shelving filter. Remember that here on the shelf. Yeah, now I remember. I know you do. I know. What's this one called? What's it look like? A slope. So uh, let's uh, do this. Uh, let me see here. What's it look like now? Is that peak? Filter. Yeah, it kind of looks like a mountain or a hill or something like that. And when I made this adjustment here, you see that? The adjustment. Do you remember what that was called? What am I doing when I do this? I'm adjusting what? You're adjusting the peak, right? Yeah, I'm adjusting the peak. That that's true, um, but down here, and I know it's hard to see. It says 20, 50, 100, 500, 1K, 5K, 10K, 20K. What are, what is that? The freak the frequency. Yeah. I'm adjusting the width 
or how much of the frequency I'm affecting, and that's called the amplitude. That's called the Q. Remember that term, the Q. I remember it. So, so just so you know, the Q, and you, and I don't know if we ever told you this, but the Q refers to something called quality factor, all right? And the quality factor or the Q of the peaking equalizer refers to the width of the bell-shaped curve, all right? This is the width. You know what I'm saying? How wide or how narrow it is, and that's called the Q. All right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I put this filter way down here, we're back to a shelving filter. Now, now, Bremi, you said, that was Bremi talking, right? Yes. Okay, you said like high cut, low cut, or high pass, low pass. Yeah, high pass. So what, what, which one is this? Isn't it high pass? Yeah, it is. Do you have another name for it? Oh, I can't remember right now. The name would be low something or other. Okay, there's high. Or a low cut, a low cut. It's cutting a low stuff, letting the high stuff pass. Do you understand that, Dara? Yes, sir. All right. So if we, if, if we, I'm just going to do the other end here just for fun. If we do the other one, Dara, What's 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 this doing? You talk, are you talk, you talking about the uh, exact line? Well, no, I'm talking about them back to the same thing. It, this is there. There's two ways to look at it: is low cut, high high cut, or low pass. And high pa pass, okay. Okay. What what's that doing? When I when I when I bring this way up here, what am I doing? You gain high. Yeah, I'm gaining the high. So, so I'm not cutting the high. I'm letting the high pass, right? Right. So it's high pass, and the opposite of high pass is low. What? Low. Wait, you said the opposite. Yeah, well, you see, we have something called high pass and low pass, or high cut and low cut. So if this is high pass, it's going to be low what? Low cut. Yeah, I'm also cutting the low. So uh, there's just two different ways to think about it. And, and you just got to to be aware that somebody might say high, high cut, or they might say low pass. All right? Okay, so we're, we're, we're like kind of done for the day. We're pretty close here. Oh, no, we're not. We'll see if it cuts out. But if it cuts out, we're going to be done. Anyways, and then I'll have to go buy the subscription, which I don't really want to do. Um, anyways, the important thing I need you to do this between now and Friday is watch those four videos and review your <laughs> all right? Because I'm going to be posting another video that's quite a bit longer that we've made uh, the other other people watch at this point, um, and there's quite a few of them actually that that specifically talks about EQ and EQ. So so let's just be aware of that, and that's where we're going to really be starting here, talking about EQ, talking about and then talking about like time based effects time-based effects are like chorus reverb things like that and those are where where you need more ram because when it's when it's a chorus it looks ahead and grabs samples of information and, or, or or it holds on information and puts it next to it behind you know what i'm saying yes sir so that's all I really need you to do between now and Friday, okay?
Okay. Oh. Okay. All right. Hang on a second. Uh, we're, we're here. I'm going to uh, solo this track, and I'm just curious. Down on this. <laughs> Hear the drum. The drum. Anyone hear me? No one. Do you hear the They're drum? Going in and out. It's going in and out for you. Yeah, me too. The sound or just my voice? 